so many of us are focused on goal setting, but if we fall short, there's this discouraging feeling that takes over and you end up losing sight of why you set the goal in the first place. So let's first take a second to reorient ourselves on why we set goals. The real reason is that we recognize that it's time for a change. So really, when we set a goal, the goal is not the goal. <laughs> change is the goal. And change happens best when we upgrade our habits. And I know we each have a different relationship with habits. And some of the journal coaching that I've provided has revealed that many writers hate that feeling of having something new on their to-do list, something that they have to accomplish or perform. We're all so busy. How can we possibly add more? Well, okay, first of all, you have to make a decision. Are you really ready to make a change? Is this something that's important to you? Uh, are you ready to let go of what you've been trying and might not be working for you and try something new? I know we all tend to get really comfortable in our routines, but shaking things up can be really satisfying. And when you create a new experience, you might be surprised by the new results or the new perspective. And, you know, once you've decided to make a change, there are a few ways to make it easier to transition, um, you know, just as we do with writing, we've got to plan our transitions in order to make them easier. And this is the key to having sustainable change, to reaching your goals. And one of the first things that I recommend is when you're planning your habits, when you're creating these action steps to accomplish your goals, start with something incredibly tiny. Uh, there's a, a quote out there, make it so easy that you can't say no. So like the smallest increment of a habit. And what I like about this is not only does it make it easy to, to not say no, but it also gives you a quick win, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. So like, I know that the, the things that I have on my to-do list, sometimes I will go ahead and do the easiest ones first. Some people do it the opposite direction, but I like to do the easy ones first because that gives me momentum, um, these quick wins that energize me and make me want to keep going. And then once you've you know, started to accomplish the smallest increment in that habit, you can begin to increase it in very small ways. So, you know, uh, another way that you might do that, let's say you want to, you know, do more squats. <laughs> it's going to do great things for your, your posting trot, I promise you. Um, so you, you know, say to yourself, I'm going to do five squats every time I get out of bed. That's a really easy number, right? Like so easy to do. And then a way to increase that might be, I'm going to do five more squats when I'm brushing my teeth. What else are you doing then, right? It's not a problem. So when you begin to slowly increase that habit in very small ways, it makes it so much more um, doable, right? And that's the goal. You're not trying to set yourself up for failure. Um, and then as you continue to build, you might want to find other times throughout your day that you can incorporate this you know, example goal of squats. Um, it might be while you're waiting for the coffee to brew or you know, you've, you're trying to find something on TV. Like until you find the thing that you wanna watch, you have to do squats. <laughs> and then think about also being gentle with yourself when you make you know, a setback in the goals, uh, in, in these habits that you're trying to cultivate. There's no reason to beat yourself up. That's not going to help you reach your goal. So if you're nice to yourself about it, you'll be able to get back on track more quickly. And then be patient. Again, you know, there's no reason to set yourself up for failure. Stick to a pace that you can actually sustain and give yourself that time and space to really learn this new habit that you want to cultivate. And in that way, you will reach your goals. Good luck.